Good morning, Mount Nebo. Good morning, my brothers and sisters, those who are looking on this broadcast. We are so thankful that God has given us an, another opportunity uh, to come into his house of worship. We thank him for another week of safety that uh, he has given us. We've been through many things this year, and, uh, but yet God is still on the throne. Amen. We have put our trust in him. And we have tried to do what needs to be done to keep us safe from uh, this pandemic, which is still raging. And in some places, it has taken off again. Uh, down in Florida, they have gone. Uh, the beaches are full. They stopped wearing masks. And uh, they, they're in danger zone again. So, uh, But we thank God that he has blessed us with... Uh, a little common sense to uh, not to put our uh, folk in harm's way. Amen. We are glad that uh, God has uh, smiled on us. We are getting close to Easter to where we can uh, celebrate his death, burial, and his resurrection. And uh, these sermons really are leading up to the Passover. So uh, we thank you, the, those of you who have been listening in, and pray that you have received something from these messages that will help you uh, to be better for the Lord. Let us pray. Father God, again, we come in the name of Jesus, our Lord. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us to open our eyes to see another day. You allowed us to lie down last night and our bed did not become our cooling board. So God, we thank you for keeping your loving eye of protection around us. We know that Satan would have come and done us harm. He comes in to break in, to rob, and to steal. But we are so thankful because we have Jesus Christ in our lives who protects us from our enemy. So God, we ask you in the name of Jesus that you will help me as I make ready to preach your gospel. And Lord, we pray that uh, it will have gotten someone's attention that we need the Lord in our lives. We need to be obedient to him and we need to praise him. So it's in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we do pray and ask all blessings. Forgive us of our sins. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Uh, we have uh, progressed to plague number 10. Plague number 10 that God has uh, shown many miracles to Pharaoh and the Egyptians and also... Uh, the Hebrews have been taking notice, understanding how powerful their God is. Because when God sent Moses down to tell Pharaoh to let the people go, uh, the people have been praying for just over 400 years for deliverance. And Moses was reluctant to go because of his speech impediment. And God told him to go down and follow the assignment that he has given him and he will send Aaron to speak for him. And Moses said, uh, who am I that I should go down and tell Pharaoh to let your people go? And oftentimes we ask that very self-same question. Lord, who am I that I should go? Who am I that I should do? Amen. And God told him, listen, you tell them that I am that I am. And 
there is no other God besides me. And we have progressed to plague number 10, which I like to call the knockout punch. The knockout punch. Amen. I know Ollie and Frazier used to go 15 rounds, but when young Tyson came in the ring, amen, the rounds didn't last as long because he would always deliver a knockout punch. And God has actually given Pharaoh every opportunity to be truthful, to come clean, if you would just let the people go. Amen. But Pharaoh said, wait a minute, I have a good thing going here. I have these slaves that's doing all the work, and um, I'm going to treat them as if they were mine, and uh, I will take possession over them to the point that they, I will not let them go. And even when Pharaoh said he would let them go, when he would send Moses off to pray that the plague be removed from Egypt, he would change his mind and his heart. And God says, you know what, I'm going to harden it just a little more because yet he still has have failed to listen, amen. He hasn't been truthful. He's been deceitful, amen. We have some people in the world like that today. They're not honest. They, they are deceitful, amen. They try to trick you, isn't that right? Amen. But uh, today we want to talk about the knockout punch, amen. This last plague, uh, the final plague that um, God will send through Moses and Aaron down to Pharaoh because God wanted his people to be delivered so they could come and worship him in the desert. Amen. Amen. God, God, God deserves our worship. Amen. Amen. He, he made us in his image and the reason he made us is to that we might worship and praise him. Amen. Thank God for that. Amen. But uh, if you will, let me read a few verses and uh, we won't hold you long today uh, and, uh, because this final plague is a continuation and will carry us all the way into Easter. Amen. Amen. Chapter 11 of the book of Exodus. Chapter 11, the book of Exodus. And the Lord said unto Moses, Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterwards, he will let you go hence. When he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out hence together. Speak now in the ears of the people and let every man borrow of his neighbor and every woman of her neighbor jewels of silver and jewels of gold. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants, and in the sight of the people. And Moses said, Thus saith the Lord, about midnight will I go out into the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon his throne, even unto the firstborn of the maidservant that is behind the meal, and all the firstborn of beast, 
And there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it anymore. But against any of my children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that ye may know how that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. And all these thy servants shall come down upon me, unto me, and bow down themselves unto me, saying, Get thee out, and all the people that follow thee. And after that I will go out. And he went out from Pharaoh in a great anger. And the Lord said unto Moses, Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. And Moses and Aaron did all these wonders before Pharaoh. And the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the children of Israel go out of his land. Amen. Amen. I want to talk about the knockout punch. The knockout punch. This final plague, I call the knockout punch because eventually it's going to get the attention of Pharaoh and all of the Egyptians. God, by his word, through Moses and Aaron, is now getting them ready for the final blow. Pharaoh and Egypt after nine crises. After each one of them, it appeared that they bounce back. Many crises, one can many a time bounce back. Amen. You've been in trouble before. You had crises to come upon you before and you have bounced back. But the reason you have bounced back is because you know the Lord. You have the Lord God, Jesus Christ, in your heart, and you know him, and you know the only way you can really freely bounce back is you must trust in the Lord. That's where our strength comes from. Then sometimes making a comeback from a crisis can be very difficult. I found out that one of the most devastating crises in life is to bury your own child. Amen. The Nile turning to blood could not get Pharaoh's full attention. Frogs, the, the gnats, the, the, the flies, the livestock, the hail, the locusts. Amen. Hurt the Egyptian people to the point they were begging Pharaoh to listen to Moses and Aaron, telling them to let the people go. But I stop by to remind you that God has the power to give a final knockout punch. Year after year after year, we have gone contrary to the world, word of God. We have not always been honest to God. 
and God got our attention. Amen. God will allow you to get in a, a tight space to where God and only God can get you out. There ought to be a witness here in the house. Amen. Amen. God said to Moses, I will bring one more plague on Pharaoh and Egypt. As if the ones that had already happened wasn't enough. But God said, you know what? I, I'm going to send one more. And after that, he will let the people go. Sometimes God has to hurt us so that he might help us. Amen. Oftentimes man gets so high-minded to the point that they won't listen or he shows us what to do, how to do, and, and we fail to obey. He will allow you to go so far And then he will lower the boom on you. It was uh, Willie Neal Johnson and the gospel keynote that sang that song, Lord, I'll do what you want me to do. And when God gathers our full attention, we are ready to say, Lord, I'll do what you want me to do. But isn't it ironic? Sometimes it's, he has a hard time getting through to us. We much like Pharaoh say, Lord, uh, you have freed me from that uh, plague, that pandemic, and I will not go back. Only to find ourselves going back on our word. Mm -hmm. So God says to Moses, said, I'm going to bring one more plague upon Pharaoh in Egypt. And after this plague, they're going to let you go. Oftentimes, we make things hard on ourselves through disobedience. But God comes in and gets our attention. Amen. And God tells them what to do. Amen. He, he, he tells them to, 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 he told Moses, you all speak to the people and let every man of his neighbor and every woman of his neighbor jewels of silver and gold borrow them. Amen. These things, God was getting them ready to head toward the desert. Pharaoh was going to receive this last plague and the people were going to start get, right now getting ready and I start by to tell us today, people in this world, it's time for you to start <clears throat> getting ready. Me knowing that the Lord is coming soon. 
And it's better that you be ready when he comes. So he told the people to gather all these things together. Go to your neighbor, um, the man bar of his neighbor, and women bar from the neighbor, jewels and silver, jewels of gold. These things they were going to take with them. <clears throat> Only to find out after they had crossed the Red Sea, they misused the good things that God had allowed them to carry with them. Amen. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of Egypt. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land. People in Egypt started having respect for the Israelites, and they started respecting Moses because they saw that Moses had, was doing some things, that he and Aaron were working some miracle that, that their magicians and their officials had no power to handle. Amen. And here they are having respect for Moses Amen. In the land of Egypt and, and in the sight of the people, the people that saw what was going on, they had respect. But the problem was is that the king, Pharaoh, still, after all that he had seen, all that Egypt had gone through, through these plagues that God had placed on them, yet he refused to honor God. What does God have to do so that people, the ones that don't even call his name, don't recognize his God, what else does he have to do to prove that he is the great I am? To prove he is Yahweh? What else does he have to do he sends the rain. He sends the wind. The grass dies out in the winter, grows back in the spring. He heals. He protects. He guides. What else does he have to do to, uh, that we will honor him the way we should? Well, these people in Egypt began to honor him because they have seen the power of the Hebrew God. Moses said, Thus saith the Lord, he said this to Pharaoh, about midnight will I go into the midst of Egypt God is tired of dealing with the foolishness of Pharaoh. So God said, Moses, I want you to tell Pharaoh that I said about midnight, I'm coming into Egypt. And when I come, I'm going to bring death with me. <laughs> Amen. 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 And this is what's going to happen, Brother Pharaoh. God told me to tell you that all of the firstborn of Egypt shall die. Pharaoh, from your son to the maid servant son, even down to the firstborn of all the beasts. I'm coming, and death is coming with me. And there's going to be such a great cry. Lord, have mercy. In Egypt, such a cry that has never been heard before. I tell you what, when, when you lose a child, Lord, have mercy. It, 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 it does something to you. 
Amen. You, you, you hurt, you mourn on the inside. And think about it, you'll never get over it. Thanks be to God, we serve a God that will help you get through it. Is there a witness here? Amen. There's going to be a cry in all Egypt. Amen. Mothers are going to be crying. Fathers are going to be crying. Lord, help the even mothers of beasts that are going to be crying. When they see their firstborn lie dead in the streets of Egypt. They're going to be weeping. There's going to be mourning all over Egypt such as never been before. And all the other plagues, amen, they, it's, they were tough. And, and, but yet Pharaoh seemed to make it through. But this was one plague that was going to tear Pharaoh down. And you know what? God has a way of tearing down pharaohs. Is there a witness here? Sometimes we have some pharaohs in our lives. And God steps in to break them down. I don't have to call, call the roll. Amen. You, you stop and you think about that. Amen. Some things that have gone on in your life, lives that, that, that you didn't know that, that, that they could be conquered. And think about it, seemed like they just last for so long. And seemed like you, it's going to be hard and difficult for you to make it through. But we serve a God. Yes, sir. Amen. That can stop by during a midnight situation. Amen. Now, during this midnight situation here, amen. Now, he can do two things. One, he can save you. He can bring you through a midnight situation. But secondly, he can cause death to come at midnight. And it's up to us to make the right choice of what we want done. Are y'all here in the house? Amen. Amen. But, uh, but look, God has a way of taking care of his children. Hallelujah. And I'm, I'm glad about that. Amen. Amen. Because God said in verse number seven, amen, this is going to happen to you, Pharaoh, in Egypt. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast. And ye shall know that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. I stop by to tell you, brother Christian, sister Christian, God makes a difference between us and them. God makes a difference between the sinner and those who love him and obey. God makes a, amen, you ought to be able to see it. Amen. You look out and see what's going on in so many lives of those who disrespect and dishonor God. And then you stop and look at yourself and say, you know what? I once walked in those shoes. I was once there, but thanks be to God, amen, God saved me, and now he makes a distinction, distinctive difference between me and them. Hallelujah. We ought to be glad about that. God said, oh, look at all those plagues. Yes, the Hebrews saw the plagues, but the plagues didn't harm them. Is there a witness here? God can do it, I tell you. Amen. And I'm glad, thanks be to God, that he makes that difference between them and us. And because if we couldn't see a difference, then we wouldn't really want to change. But I'm glad that somebody told me a long time ago, if you give your life to Jesus Christ, hallelujah, a change will come 
in your life. And sometimes it's like we pray about something for 400 years. And it seems like it's never going to happen. But in God's own time, he steps right in. And you can say, like uh, Walter Hawkins said, a change, a change has come over me. He changed my life. And now I'm free. Amen. I'm glad that God stepped in and gave Satan the knockout punch. Just like he was doing Pharaoh. God, tell him, you've seen it. No harm has come to my people. But all the harm has come to you. And then not only that, but he says in verse 8, And all these thy servants shall come down unto me, bow down themselves unto me, oh, hallelujah, and say, get these people out of here. They have had enough. The servants had had enough. They were trying to get Pharaoh to understand we've had enough. We don't want to go through any more. And now they're saying, you know what? They're going to come to me. They're going to bow down and say, let these people go. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. And, and he went out from Pharaoh with a great anger. Moses went out upset. He was angry because he said, you know what? Pharaoh had brought all of this on all of you people. And y'all bought it on yourself. Now here they are. They going to, they telling Pharaoh as well. Pharaoh, please. Let those people go. Their God has power that we've never seen before. Y'all stick a pin there. Amen. He, he's a God of power. We've never seen it before. And the Lord said unto Moses, listen what he said. Amen. Amen. Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. His wonders multiplied over and over again, showed him over and over and over again, and he still refused to bow down to God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And Moses and Aaron did all these wonders before Pharaoh, and the Lord hearkened, hardened Pharaoh's heart, so that he would not let the children of Israel go. His own people begging him, Master, let them go. But no, didn't want to let them go. Amen. But I stopped by to tell you, God will give the final knockout punch. Because he has the power to knock things out. Amen. And I'm glad today that I, I've lived long enough to understand and see the power of of God. Have I got a witness here? God has all power. Isn't that right? Amen. Somebody here ought to praise God for his mercy endureth forever. Have I got a witness here? You should be able to see how God has blessed you in spite of you, protected you, provided for you. And all the things Pharaoh and Egypt went through, God allowed them to see that he had his hand on all of his people. God has put a difference and distinctive difference between us and Satan. But I stopped by to tell you I'm glad that he has power over Satan. Satan didn't believe it, but God showed his power. Isn't that right? Jesus uh, went to Calvary's cross, nailed him to a cross, uh, and Satan said, we got him right where we want him. But something happened uh, 
on Sunday morning, the Bible said Jesus got up from the grave with all power in his hand. Have I got a witness? Uh, Jesus got all power. He has saving power. He has divine protective power. Have I got a witness? Uh, and he will watch over his children. I don't know about you, but uh, I've been around a few days. Um, and I thank God because he watched over me. Uh, I was on my way to a place called hell. Have I got a witness here? No way to get out of my sins, but Jesus uh, stopped by uh, and I accepted him in my life uh, and he forgave me of my sins. Uh, set me on a street called straight. Uh, now I'm going to run on for Jesus uh, a little while longer. Somebody said to see what the end going to be. Uh, yeah, Lord, uh, I'm glad. Uh, when I look back over my life, uh, I see what the Lord has done for me. Uh, amen. And I, I'm glad that he will do the same thing for anybody that come crying out, I yield, I yield. What must I do to be saved? Uh, he'll knock sin uh, out of your life. Uh, he'll knock wrong uh, out of your life. Uh, and I'm glad that he will uh, make a way for his children. Uh, look at yourself. Uh, look back over your life uh, and see where the Lord has brought you from. Uh, I can say like granddaddy said, uh, he brought me uh, from a mighty long way. Uh, didn't deserve it, but he brought me. Uh, I didn't do right, uh, but he brought me. Uh, I did. I lied and cheated, uh, but he brought me, uh, and I'm glad about it. Uh, he's a God who will make a way for his children. Uh, he'll protect you and he will make a distinctive difference between you and the people of the world. We are to walk as children of the king. We're no longer in darkness. We're now walking in the light. Uh, why? Because Jesus gave Satan the final knockout punch. And he'll do it, he'll knock him out of your life if you ask him to come in. Lord, we thank you just for these few words as we continue in this lesson, Lord. We will talk about how to survive the crisis, how to survive the crisis, that we will inherit eternal life, that we will be able to live. Amen. Amen. God bless each of you. We pray God's blessings on you. Amen. If you're here today and you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ, now is the acceptable time. He, he's waiting on you. He's patient, long-suffering, waiting on some lost sinner to come home, to come to him, that he will save you from your sins. Being a Christian does not mean mean you're going to be perfect down here. But what it does mean is that when you recognize the Lord as your personal Savior, He died for your sins. He saved us by His blood. We were justified by His blood. We are sanctified Oh, hallelujah. Set apart for his holy service. If 
you are there today, right where you are, whether you're in your car, on the highway, at work, or, or, it doesn't matter where you are. You can accept Jesus Christ where you are. Just ask him, Lord, come into my life. And that will mean that when you get ready to leave here, you'll be in the safety zone because when you accept him, he has a place prepared for you. Give him your life. Give him your life. Amen. And the day will come. Amen. We're going to be just like him. We're going to have a great fellowship in heaven. No sin can get in. Sin will be destroyed in the lake of fire along with Satan and his imps. Yes. Amen. You're safe with Jesus. So accept him today. It's in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Drawn from Emmanuel's veins As sinners plunge Beneath the flood Lose all thy guilty stain Lose all thy guilty stain. Lose all thy guilty stain. As sinners plunge beneath the flood. Lose all thy guilty stain. It was on a Thursday night when Jesus sat down with his disciples to celebrate the Passover feast. At that Passover feast, they served roast lamb, bitter herbs and spices, a sauce with the herbs were dipped, loaves of unleavened bread, and water mixed with wine. The place was prepared, a large upper room historically belonging to the family of John Mark. As they sat down celebrating the Passover feast, Jesus made it known, one of you would betray me tonight. They began asking questions, Lord, is it I? Lord, who's going to do this terrible thing. Peter was sitting next to John and, and John was the, the beloved disciple. And Peter hunched John and said, John, ask him. Ask him who's going to do this terrible thing. Jesus said, the one that sops with me As he rose from his mat, headed to the sopping dish, 
Judas met him there. And Jesus looked him in the face. And said, what thou doest, do it quickly. The Bible said that he got up, he ran out into the night to betray our, betray our Lord. The candles will be lit. We don't have any power to change these emblems from a common to spiritual use, but we just talked about the one who had all power, that has all power. And that's our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm going to ask Deacon Frederick Douglas Anderson if he will pray over the emblems as we continue in service. Dear God, we come once again to thank you for another day of standing with us. We come thanking you for another opportunity to commune with you, God. We come asking, Father God, that you will touch our hearts and minds. Anything in us that's not right, that's wrong with us, Father, we ask that you will clean us up. We ask for your forgiveness of these things, dear God. And we ask, Father, that you will bless this bread that's to represent your broken body. And bless, dear God, through the divine that's to represent your shared blood. And we thank you for using our blessings and pray and ask. Amen. Amen. Um, Judas did not share in this portion of service. He had already left the room and headed out. Take this, my brother, and divide it among yourselves. Take this, my brother, and divide it among yourselves. He'd gone out to betray our Lord. Thirty pieces of silver was the pay. And that's the reason the Bible tells us that the love of money is the root of all evil. When you put your money before your God, It can turn evil. When you put more stock in what money you have than the one who helped to give it to you and provide it for you, it's become evil. Because God is our sole provider. And every good and perfect gift comes from from thee and thee alone. Has any been omitted the serving of the bread? Has been any been omitted the serving of the cup? Come in, my brother. This bread represents the body of Jesus Christ that was broken for you. I remind you, none of his bones were broken. The psalmist had predicted that, that none of his bones would be broken. 
when they got to Jesus Christ to break his legs when he was on the cross, he had already died. So they took him down from the cross. But this is the bread that came down from heaven. And he that eateth this bread shall never die. Let's eat it, y'all. Amen. This fruit of the vine represents his blood that was shed for us on Calvary's cross. Without the shedding of the blood of the Lamb of God, there would be no remission of sin. Let us commune together. They sang a hymn and went out into the Mount of Olives. As you go, go with a song on your heart that Jesus Christ suffered, bled, and died. And on the third day, rose from the grave with all power in his hand. Amen. It was the blood that signed my name. Oh, the blood, oh, the blood, the blood done signed my name. Oh, the blood, oh, the blood, the blood done signed my name. Oh, the blood, oh, the blood, the blood done signed my name. Oh, the blood done signed my name. Father God, again, we thank you. We thank you for blessing us and blessing our minds to remember what you did for us on Calvary's cross. We thank you for what you're doing for us right now. We know that you're alive and well. Continue to lead us and guide us and bless us. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit Rest, rule, and abide with us now, henceforth, and forevermore. Let all the saints of God say amen, amen, amen. 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 Go in peace.